<laughs> All right. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Stage Kiss and Tell, where we will tell you all our secrets. We're so excited. I am Missy Maramara, and welcome to Stage Kiss, um, our little open house offering from Repertory Philippines. Um, we'll be talking about uh, a historical thing because stage kissing will be a thing of the past. And please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, with me tonight will be amazing people from the production and they'll be coming on as I call them. First off, our director, Carlita Sigyan Reyna. Hello, everybody. Up next, our set designer, Um David. Hi, good evening, everyone. Our lighting designer, Dennis Marasigan. Good evening. Welcome to Stage Kiss and Tell. Our lovely costume designer, Bonsai Cielo. Hi, everyone. Our handsome choreographer, PJ Rabolida. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and now for our cast, we have Tarek El Tayesh. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, with good lighting. Hello, everyone. The director, Jamie Wilson. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Kevin, the understudy, Andres Borromeo. Obad! Oh, it's good to see you. Obad! Oh, <laughs> well, we will be auctioning off Andres, so the more you donate, oh, the more oh, uh, The top the bidder will get him. Yes. <laughs> Access Minister to him. Minister Mari, Mika Pineda. And Millie Millicent Angela Justine Narcisa. Hello. And of course, this production would not be possible without our amazing stage manager, Maxine Ramos. Woohoo! Yay! Yay. Yay. Maxine. So basically today, our panel here will be answering questions about the process, as well as naughty questions about the people in the production. And if our audience will be giving us questions, we'll be answering them as well. We'll be also, we'll be sharing some fun backstage videos and snippets of the production. So please enjoy your time with us as we tell on each other, spill our secrets and reveal secret desires. <laughs> mm, so so let me just share this a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to also introduce to you members of our dream team who couldn't join us today, but are truly <laughs> integral to our whole creative process. We'd like to give a big shout out to uh, our CEO, Tito Mindy Perez Rubio, Rep uh, President and CEO. Mm -hmm. And to our, uh, the Rep Artistic Director, uh, Liesel Batukan. Our sound designer, Jethro Joaquin. And uh, the person who played the husband, and Harrison, Robbie Guevara. <laughs> and let's not forget about our pianist, Mr. Nick Nangit. We also don't want to forget our production managers, Mariko Yasuda and Sean Asque. And our production team, Hi Kanchi Sun and Pat Sales. And of course, our costume mistress, Tess Andalaza, and Winea Elombaring, and our costume assistant, Izarko. Yay, this everybody, guys. But not just everybody, we also have. Shout out, shout out. We're shouting out to the boys. Yeah, shout out to the boys. Mika Pineda shouts out too. Yeah. Jerry, the boots. The boots. The ball. Fabs, talks, and Mark. Boom, boom. And a very special shout out to the rep officers and the board of trustees. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Super thank, thank you. you all. So this is episode number two. Uh, this is for Open House. It's a fundraiser for the displaced workers of the theater industry. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Third World Improv, Artists Welfare Project, Inc., Phil Stage, TicketToMe.net, Spit, and the Theater Actors Guild. If you want to donate, you can follow the link uh, bit.ly forward slash donate open house or you can uh, donate to the land bank account number 
1772-103073. So, uh, donate, guys. We will appreciate that. So, our first question, ladies and gentlemen, is what attracted or challenged you to do Stage Kiss for Repertory Philippines? Up first is our wonderful director, Carlito Sigyon Reyna. I, uh, yeah, uh, for me, what, what challenged me and attracted me to the material was really um, the, the genre mashup uh, nature of the material of uh, display of Sarah Rule. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've, come, uh, I've, I've uh, worked with a play of Sarah Rules. And one of the things that really interested me also was the, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the tonal differences within the same play. You've got the comedy, you've got the realistic drama, you've got the fantasy inside it. Uh, with the music, the musical component, the uh, choreo, the dancing. Um, and and uh, aside from that, I really enjoyed the research process because this is the first time I've worked with her, with her works. I, I, I did some reading up on her and I read the, I read the really wonderful little book that she wrote called 100 Essays I Don't Have to, Time to Write. And I picked up some things that, um, some tips that she had there uh, and, uh, dropped some other things that I didn't know what to do with. One of the things I didn't know what to do with was uh, she doesn't really uh, believe in um, when, when working with her place, she doesn't, doesn't expect you to be working with subtext. So uh, I, I, I kind of like just, well, I thought about that. I decided to use subtext anyway. Um, but the other thing that I really, uh, she says, which was really eye opening for me was uh, the idea of transformation, which is, um, a lot of things like uh, she picks up, uh, she quotes examples from Ovid and uh, Metamorphosis and uh, Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream, where, where an, a, donk, a man can turn into a donkey or an ass and without any logical explanation, it's just this transformation. So I, I, I kind of like, the, uh, I enjoyed um, jumping into the world where those things are possible. And that was pretty much what we had in mind uh, when we were staging Stage Kiss. Uh, the direction of it, the choreo work with BJ, uh, the lighting design with uh, Dennis Marasigan, and and I, I also look forward to look forward to working with this great cast and uh, with a theater company, Repertory Philippines, the first time upon the invitation of this uh, artistic director Lisa Batuka. So that's uh, those are the things that attracted me to do the material. You know, Direk was so wonderful to work with that um, we got a prize at the end. I just wanted to share. This is what we would do if we, if we acted well. Yes. We got, we got to do this. And Tarek got so jealous that he said, I want to do well. So he, got, he got the beard at the end. That just means I did well. <laughs> All right, Jamie Wilson. Hi, guys. Um, well, what attracted me to uh, this play? Well, I, I've, I've been playing villains. Um, you know, the Contrabidas for so many years in uh, most of my productions. And it was really nice to be able to play a role that was not a Contrabida. In fact, he was fun. He was cuddly. He was incompetent. Um, and he, he was just so much fun to play with. Nothing heavy at all. Very light. Um, another uh, another um, point that attracted me, not only this wonderful cast when I found out, but when you're invited by Carlito Sigyon Reyna to come in and uh, do a show with him, if you have nothing else on your plate, you know, you jump right away. It's, uh, it, it all came together wonderfully. It's my first time working with Carlitos. And it's, it was so wonderful to be back on the rep stage uh, doing a straight play and not a musical and not as technical director. It was just, that's all the responsibility I had was to be this wonderfully incompetent uh, director with bad taste. <laughs> thanks, Jamie. All right, thanks so much, Jamie. <laughs> I'm the beard. Hi. Uh, what attracted me to this play? Well, director Carlitos, Dennis, and I were still doing, um, we're uh, running Pipi's Katsuri when we lightly met on stage kiss, and that I think was what really attracted me to work on it. Because ang bigat bigat ng Katsuri, and then we are talking about a comedy, which I think was a big mistake. Because hindi siya madale. It, it, it really wasn't, wasn't easy. Medyo mahirap siya. And one exciting challenge was to design three realistic sets for three totally different scenes, big sets, and to actually change each set fast. There. 
So we see here we're going into from Act One, right? We go into Act Two, and this is your maquette, yeah, which turned into a set, right? And I just want to show how that magic happened um, from a from that the end of Act One. Mechanical yung set, oh. Parang mechanical, no? But I was, we were actually there at the back, nakahiga. Okay, machine <laughs> and, and good, oh. So many set change rehearsals and the uh, determined staff. Um, one big problem was we changed set changers almost every rehearsal day due to wow. schedule problems. <laughs> but we, I think we nailed it. When we nailed that um, schedule problems, we were okay. Uh, the rep staff yeah. was uh, determined, has a determined heart and they do not complain. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> no, it is amazing. It's amazing to experience. All right, our costume designer, Ms. Bonsai Cielo. Hi. Uh, so what detracted the challenge you to do the play? Um, for me, what challenged me about the play was its um, use of the play within the play uh, to show the, the illusions and the realities of the characters. And it was a challenge um, on how that would translate into the costumes. Um, when I first uh, met with Derek Carlitos for Stage Kiss, he mentioned about how significant it was for us to show um, the lead character, she, um, and her state of mind and how it progressed um, throughout the play. And I liked the idea of the lead character's state of mind uh, affecting the whole play visually. Uh, and so I took it as a challenge to make it the context of the costumes, um, not just for the lead character, but also for the whole cast. Um, it was, um, it, it took a lot of discussions with the actors and with our director, um, fitting all the pieces together. And at the end of the day, um, we were just kind of hoping that it all translated well to our audience. All right. <laughs> so bonsai, as you all know, yeah. like Liesel, is a rose among thorns. And she, here she is with the rest of the artistic team, except PJ isn't here, no? But yeah. she will be now our first contestant for Casal Kiss Kill. What Yay! does that mean? <laughs> okay. What is this? So bonsai, oh. I'm going oh, to show you three guys. people from the production, and you have to choose who you will marry, who you will <laughs> kiss, and who you will kill. You'll have to choose, huh? Oh, yes. Personalan. Yes. <laughs> 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 personalan, guys. So oh. are you ready, Bonsai? Yeah. Sure. Your choices are Direct Carlitos. Oh no! Oh, end of my, my career! <laughs> This is the end of my and, career. Uh, <laughs> oh damn! Okay. okay. <laughs> Missy uh, put her on the spot. I know. Um, Lisa should be doing this, not me. <laughs> okay. Um, let's start with kill. On the wind. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Um, kiss. Um, uh, wait, you have to tell us why. Sir. Yeah, why? Sir, why? 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 Oh, you have to tell us why. Why? why? Okay. Oh, oh, why? Looks um, good why, why will you? Why will you kill him? Because I've worked with him um for a couple <laughs> that, of productions. That's and reason enough. Every Jenna. time, I would coordinate with him um about color palette. He would use the same color palette as mine. So oh, oh, no. I would I would kill him for that. Um, <laughs> if, no, if anybody knows, she, uh, Bonsai is my sister-in-law. Hi, Bonsai. Yay! Hey. Okay. Okay. That's why she's so bold. Who would you kiss? So, Who would you kiss? So, kiss, um, siguro si Sir Dennis. Kasi, um, <laughs> ilang beses na siyang nag-leading man eh. So, <laughs> I... I I might need that uh, kiss para maging leading lady. <laughs> and then, yeah. Kasal, 
si Sir Carlito, you know, I, I could just imagine the ano, late night talks with Sir Carlito. Yon. Yon. You sure y'all gonna be talking? You sure y'all gonna be talking though? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, a round of applause, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for Barca Siano. Clapping. But of course, you know, the reason why we're do- doing this, we're doing the episode, is together with Open House, right? And the efforts to raise funds for the performing arts community, because we all know what's been happening is affecting the arts very much. And we all don't know when that's coming back and going back to normal. So this is an online fundraising project for the benefit of Third World Improv, Artist Welfare Project, Phil Stage, Spit, Theater Actors Guild. And you can give your donations via www.ticketto.me.net and also via a land bank account. Our land bank account is, it's a checking account, Land Bank BSP Service Unit Artist Welfare Project, Inc. Checking account, 1772-103073. Again, that's 1772-103073. Please, please donate. This is why we're doing this. We're trying to do our part. So just please, please donate as well. Thank you. This will go to artists that have been displaced by the COVID pandemic and of course uh, the groups that pulled all of this together are so grateful for your help. All right, second question. What was unusual, new, and odd in the creative process for this play? Ooh, Our first... Ooh. I'll answer. I'll answer, I'll answer that. Oh! It was already ordained that I will answer. Well, <laughs> and, and all about it. Well, what was familiar... For me, it was that uh, I had the opportunity to work with all these wonderful people that I've worked with before, like Selemissi, and I'm forgetting other people's names now since I'm on the spot. And the thing that was odd and new for me about it was just being in that uh, position. It was just new for me having all of this responsibility this that I'd have to carry on my shoulders to make sure that... Uh, the entirety of the play goes off without a hitch and you know considering how i'm not that good in singing and dancing and the recalitos would always let me know about that which was fantastic thank you direct i am an improved person because of you and uh, and an actor improved actor as well so yay yay carrying the responsibility Tarek. what are you saying huh that uh, i'm heavy no no on carrying me you're not All heavy show, what are you saying, look huh? at that look at me carrying you like a goliath man Look at, look at me. <laughs> but really, it was the crutches, right? It was oh, the crutches. Oh, look. I'm flying like Michael Jordan, yo. You had Listen to dance me. with those crutches, man. Um, you, move over, Fred Astaire, whoever that is. Um, um, look at that. with my, And I have long socks on this picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next is Justine Narciso. Hello, everyone. So for me, uh, what was new and uh, what, it's actually a lot more unusual for me because it was my first ever uh, non-musical comedy because I was just coming from our city's quest for the Adarna. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so I miss Adarna very much. Uh, and I miss Stage Kiss, of course. I miss Stage Kiss. Uh, so the RCT schedule for Quest for the Adarna, our rehearsals would be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Mondays to Fridays. So effectively, I was a morning person because of this schedule. And Adarna was happening throughout uh, Stage Kiss. So I think Andres knows this feeling too and, and uh, about... Yeah. <laughs> having to wake up for a 10 a.m. show, so 8 a.m. call time, after having stage kiss rehearsals up until 10 p.m. So our stage kiss schedule was every TTH, we had 6 to 10 p.m. But, okay, but every Saturdays and Sundays, we had 1 to 10 p.m. Woo! (laughs) And it was to really accommodate everyone's schedule. Uh, It was... uh, um, but it was a really uh, nice kind of sacrifice because look at what happened uh, with the whole play. I mean, everything turned out amazing and I got to work with amazing people. And um, it was also my first time to do a non-musical comedy, right? So comedies are effectively a lot harder, in my opinion, than dramas because um, you really have to be there in the moment to make sure you're not putting anything on and create really a genuine response from the audience. like. 
their laughter, it's really harder, I think, to get people to laugh than to get people to cry. So uh, I really had so much fun. It was a great learning experience. And despite being unfamiliar, I'm glad that everyone is so familiar now. And yay! So yeah, that's my experience. Don't anticipate. Don't an oh, Missy, 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 one, one moment, sorry. Uh, just to everyone who's watching now in the chat, if you have any in the in the video or the live stream, if you have any questions for us, we're going to answer them. Just put them down in the comments, please, please. Any questions, anything about anything, just put it down here. Yes, go, go, Missy, go. I'll be quiet. Our next <laughs> is our head stage manager, Maxine Ramos. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Eric, why are you cutting into my time? <laughs> I have a story to share about you later, Maxine, when you're done. <laughs> okay, so um, something new, unusual, odd, um, pretty much the entire production. Because, full disclosure, this is my first professional show as a head stage manager. Take her! <laughs> what? So, Take her, she's amazing. Oh, Liar. <laughs> so, um... Everything was new and also kind of intimidating because I had to work with big names like Sir Dennis. Uh, Jamie was my teacher before, so that was nice. Uh, Sir Carlos, every, mm -hmm. everyone. I don't want to name everyone because people might get mad that I didn't mention them. <laughs> I'm but, very proud of you. I'm very, very proud of you, Maxine. Thank you, Jamie. Yes. Uh, it was nice to see you as the director and then watch you in El Bimbo as a, a villain. That was kind of <laughs> jarring. Anyway, so yeah, Jamie was my teacher. A lot of these people are way older than me. So it was a little bit hard. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said Thank a lot, you, not all of you. <laughs> so it was Why the need for the extra word? <laughs> it was a little hard <laughs> to, to control. <laughs> but um, I had a, a tool to help me get these people in line it's a bell so every time i ring this they're just they just they listen to me so that's great <laughs> pavlovian yeah. stage manager technique. thank you so much <laughs> can i just say manager. can i just yeah sorry missy can i just say about this maxine like how she's saying this is her first it's not there's this line i'm always forgetting in the play and the next day i come in after having messed it up so bad and it's written on paper on my mirror right there the entire <laughs> speech is right there she is cold blood man jamie you taught her well <laughs> thanks Derek. all right pj nebolida our choreographer <laughs> hi everyone yeah um what was odd and unusual with the production was uh working with carlitos for the first time and i had to observe him and he was so meticulous with everything and i was like okay do i have to be this meticulous with choreography as well <laughs> And it was really a question of how to go about the choreography. And the nice thing about the play was it was absurd. And you think about it so hard, like Carlitos would do everything meticulously. And then when you get there to creating it, you just let your instincts fly. And that was the most wonderful thing about the play. But it was unfamiliar territory. Because who would think like you needed choreography for a straight play? And then you're supposed to make your dancers be safe and look good, but they're not supposed to be good dancers also. So, I mean... It was really a struggle to find out that middle line where it's absurd, but it serves the purpose of the play. Whatever the purpose is, if it's transformation, if it's to prove a point, or just to have fun. And part of me was just like lost sometimes, but you just had to trust your instincts. And I'm so happy that I could trust the people in the cast. And that was for me the most unfamiliar territory. The familiar territory for me was working in unfamiliar territory because don't you just love it when you don't know what you're doing and then you find something? And that for me is the most beautiful thing about rehearsal. So I can't wait to get back in the studio with these people or with other people just to rehearse. And hopefully we can still kiss again on stage soon. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Here's a product of your trust, a little snippet of your choreo. And make, oh, yeah. note, guys, I'm not a singer. <laughs> yeah. This is my favorite. None of them were singers or dancers. Maybe except Robbie. None of us are dancers. <laughs> but we had to do three versions of this choreography until we settled into tap dance. <laughs> we had to learn tap dance. I just love right? Robbie's wig. 
the okay, best thing Okay, this, uh, this is this is I one love of our reactions. Moments. I know. Go direct, go direct. This is one of those moments where this this scene came from uh, from some uh, uh, the rehearsal of the play within the play, and it was supposed to be what they were rehearsing was this melodramatic, uh, you know, this this 1930s melodrama. So it's very they were taking themselves very seriously, but in an absurd way. And then it breaks into this absurd, ridiculous. I mean, you know, uh, weird um, uh, song and dance routine. You know, uh, it is built in somehow. In, it is built in uh, that shift in tone is built into the material, and um, yeah, so. It was, it was a challenge. Remember this, Durak? Some yeah, there were many, oh. yeah, there were so many layers in that other pas de deux. Like, you're playing lovers, but in real, in the play, you're also playing lovers also. So here you're with other lovers. So it's like yeah. a mishmash yeah. of lovers. So, so even but if you're let's, playing let's a role... It. Uh, sorry, what, what? You're playing a role? So even if you're playing a role, you're also that character. So parang those layers inside everything, this was, these were just like mind apps while you were creating and making things happen. Oh, but you know, as beautiful as this production number was, we were upstaged <laughs> by the Chuwari Wat. Boom, Guys, boom, boom. We were already behind the window and they still stole <laughs> the production number. <laughs> oh, Look listen to that. that. No, it's, ooh. Look you at know. that cuteness. <laughs> All right. Guys, it's time for... Kasal kiss kill. Oh, oh no. no. Round two. All right. Here we go. Boogaloo. I'm not going to tell you yet who is going to choose. I'm going to tell you who they have to choose from. Is it Tarek El Tayesh? That's the winner right there. Is it Andres Borromeo? Oh. Okay. We are auctioning off, ladies and gentlemen. If yes. You yes. <laughs> like maybe 10,000 pesos, he'll take off his shirt. Just what? his shirt. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Or PJ Rebolida. The, yeah. the highest donor tonight can choose which any of these men will take off their shirts. Yes. So please, I already got, I'm started halfway already. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the person to choose from this production, who among these boys they will casal, kiss, or kill is Jamie Wilson. Oh yes. my God. I'm so winning this. Oh my God. Okay. I'm so winning um, this. Okay, let's start with uh, kill. Who would I kill? Tarek, I would kill you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Explain yourself. I uh, agree with Amy. Because, you know, because two alphas, you know, does not make a relationship. But we can make it work. And you're a little too hairy for me. Um, <laughs> I'll shave for you, baby. Okay. And, um, okay, so uh, kiss. Definitely PJ Rebolida. Yes, yes, because you because you can just imagine all the various positions he can get you in for that kiss. My instructional pa, he will make mm. sure you're safe and comfortable. And of course, which leaves Casal and Andres, baby, <laughs> you're the man for me uh, to spend uh, our time with. Because you know what, parang actually parang kasal na rin kami ni Andres because. Backstage for this whole run and even for these Zoom meetings, it's always in order of arrival. I'm there early and then a dress comes in. Yeah. And we share. But didn't you already kiss a dress also? Yeah. So you don't need to kiss him anymore. Oh, okay. Kasal lang. Kasal lang. Kasal, kasal, kasal lang si Andres. Look at the next level. Marriage. Let's, let's, and then I will haunt you know, your marriage. And not not marriage, only that. Yeah. Can can I just can I just mention that you know if I were to marry Andres, then I'm marrying one of the ten most eligible bachelors in Manila. Number two, yo. Uh, Number oh. two. Put respect on that name, Jamie Wilson. Number two. <laughs> we have to check our highest donors for the night. Jamie might be on the list. So. Mm. <laughs> and that is why Casal kiss and then. Um, as you guys know, this episode is for the open house efforts to raise funds for the performing arts community that has been ravaged by this pandemic. So if you guys are having fun, if you guys watch Stage Kiss and you supported us, please, 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 should you wish to help, kindly please donate through uh, this link right here. Uh, or you can also donate to this bank account. Uh, as you can see, checking account 1772103073. That is right. So, what's next, Missy? How do you spell repertory? 
The next is, what was the easiest and hardest part of the process? And let's start with our lighting designer, Dennis Marasigan. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah. Um, hardest part, uh, coming back to light a production at Rep after 36 years, <laughs> which was the last time I lit a production for Rep. Also, it's the first time for me to design the lighting at uh, uh, on stage at Greenbelt. So it was um, a bit frightening. The good thing is that um, last year I was able to work in, uh, in on stage for, uh, for Miyong. So I got to be familiar with the people there already. And then the, the crew, particularly Pablito and uh, talks were people that I had worked with before in uh, in CCP. The easy part is that I knew I was going to be working with uh, Carlitos and Om and bon or Bonsai who I have all worked with uh, particularly in the recent past with Carlitos and Om we did uh, and Bonsai we did Coriolanos last year and then Carlitos and Om uh, and I also worked on uh, on Katsuri so in a sense there's been a there's already a kind of a working relationship that's there. Aside from the fact that Carlitos and, and I know each other for like over 20 years already, I have acted for him. He has acted for me. So there's a kind of, uh, uh, in a way, it, it made it easy uh, in that sense. The only, the hard part in the process, if I may add, is that during the technical week, uh, Carlitos couldn't decide how far downstage he wanted the set to be. So uh, I was waiting until he finalized. I thought we had lights. And <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't know if we had lights in the apron. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and then yeah. I was I kept asking Om, Om, ano ba? Uh, sabi ni Om, uh, actually sa design ko dapat nasa downstage eh, kaya lang uh, uh, tanong na lang na. <laughs> It was so much fun. Sir Dennis, thank you so much. Thank Up next you. is Mika Pineda from Pavetta, Millicent Lore. Oh. Hello, grabe from Pavetta pa rin. <laughs> Kali na nun ah. But anyway, um, anyway, yes. So what was the hardest and the easiest? The hardest for me was, I guess, um, how do you look like you're high and at the same time you're having a meltdown? It, and, and that was it. It was really just like, oh no, Jamie, how do I do this? What does high look like? You know, or at what Bakit level? Bakit special mention? And the most special gay. I think I don't have to explain the obvious when I say that. But but yeah, really just deciding even directly. It was like, direct how high do you want her to be or not, right? But but what I've also come to realize is how it it's kind of also difficult to play characters that are closest to your actual self. Um, finding which one to take and which one not to take. And my character only had one scene. So I had to show a complete journey um, of Laurie in that one scene. But it was really, really fun because it was crazy and I'm crazy. So yeah, that's my but answer. But Mika Pineda from Pavetta, let's face it, okay? Your favorite scene. Was when you weren't Laurie yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I have a I video think yet. Everyone's <laughs> favorite scene, right? You know, oh, oh, we actually showed it. Guys, this photo is going to get you to donate, please. Me and Nisi <laughs> will do this again if you donate. <laughs> yes. We After agree. social distancing. Right. Yes. Can I, I, uh, can I just. Now. Oh, snap. Here it is. Go on, yep. Andres. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. My name's Andres. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. So, um, so I've never, I've never had an on-stage kiss before, like ever. So this production stage kiss was the first time I was ever gonna kiss anyone on stage. So I was very, very nervous. I was, I didn't, yes, as you can see, I was, I didn't know what to expect, you know. Um, but thankfully, my scene partners, uh, Missy and Jamie, made, made it very comfortable for me. And surprisingly, that was the. I found that to be one of the easiest things to really kissing scenes. I, I was not expecting that, but they turned out to be one of the easiest things to do during this play for me. Now, <laughs> the challenging part was I, I played, so I played four different characters. I was Kevin the understudy. I was a doctor. 
I was a butler and I was a pimp. We had that in the long sleeve white out. That's that's me as a pimp. And so the quick costume changes. I've I've never had to do it that quick ever in in, in any play that I've been in. So that was very very challenging. And so thankfully, um, I had uh, Winea. Shout out to Winea. She was our dresser backstage. If you're watching Winea, thank you very much. She helped me with the, the ten seconds, five five to ten second quick changes, and I was just like stressing out, but. You know, she made everything happen and made it very smooth. So thank you. So yeah, those are my, uh, that was the easiest and challenging part that I experienced during this. Uh, Andres, can we have a sample of the quick change right now? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andres, for the record, so who was your first stage kiss? Jamie or Missy? It was Missy. Missy. It was Missy. <laughs> Missy Number was two lang ako. Unlucky, Number unlucky. Two. Win. I will. Yeah, but the real question, Andres is my better. Starving and he's, we've never kissed. Oh, yeah, actually, no one ever asked you that question, Andres. Who's a better kisser? Who's a better Jamie? kisser? So thankfully. Uh, uh, in three. So, I, I guess because of the kind of kiss we had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Missy, I'm sorry. But, you know, Jamie, it just had, just, it was that. <laughs> Andres. It's okay, Andres. You know, of all of you, Mika was the best kisser. Lies. <laughs> Knew it. Knew Lies. It. Lies. All right, so. yes, yes, guys, we are that kind of a show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. My turn. All right. So, basically, friends, um, this was a dream role, really. Oh, yes, guys, we are that kind of a show. It was a, it was a, it was the whole meta theatrical component of reality versus illusion was just so exciting to do to explore. Um, the easiest part was working with these people. It was amazing, and the hardest part was letting them go. So there, that's what it is. I really had so much fun. Thank you, repertory, for letting me. A uh, shout out to Miss Tessie because she really, I think Tessie was like, uh, she helped me with all those changes, you know, and every time like there was a costume mishap and I'd be make the, my entrance. Make the cuento of the most oh. harrowing mishap, Messi. And then I want to read some comments from uh, people who are watching, you know. Sure. There's well, that one incident, Missy. You remember all that. We all remember that. Well, there were several incidents. One, my <laughs> mic fell off. And I had to, I had two mics. <coughs> one of them fell off and I had to, you know, they, I, I was dragging it on the floor, right? So I had to, when I tripped purposefully, it was for the scene, I tripped and that's when I took it off and put it where Justine could pick it up. And the audience, the, you know, these, these cast people, are, they're so quick on the pickup. They saved me every time. One time my, my dress just popped, the, the zipper at the back popped and I had to ask Tarek without words to zip, my, to zip it up. Um, what else? Oh, one time my, my nipple tape just fell and I was gonna go commando on that stage <laughs> and bet y'all didn't expect to hear the word nipple today did you <laughs> and the cast had to wait and they were, they were waiting usually it takes me 30 seconds but they waited an, a minute and they were so good they didn't drop character they didn't panic they were amazing so thanks you guys it was so good so, Tess is actually watching right now, and she says hi to everyone. Hola, hola, Tess. Hi, Tess. You know, this is one comment I, I saw here from Bona Bonita. We celebrated our wedding anniversary watching your play. How sweet is Aww. that, huh? Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful experience. Me and my wife really had a great time. Regretted we didn't get the chance to have a picture taken with Miss Bebeth and Sir Carlos. So maybe when all the thing is lifted, I will get that picture for you, right? Uh, so all right. Thank you. Hello to Jan and I'm gonna just share a little snippet backstage oh. of the ladies' room. Okay, the dressing room of the ladies. Um, all the boys would come in at certain points and they'd ask, "Anybody naked?" And we'd say, "Yes" or, or "No." Um, but with Andres, every time he says, "Anybody naked?" we say, "For you, Andres, always." So this is a video of him in the ladies' room. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I violated a <laughs> No, no, that's not a video. Come on, stop that. That's not a, cut that. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, Andres Borromeo has to play Casal Kiss Kill. Yeah! You Yay! that video and you did not want to donate Woo! right now. What <laughs> has happened to your heart is stone. This donate now for oh, okay. Andres to take his shirt off. Let's go. All right, Andres. Are you ready to play? Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay. so, because you're such a ladies' man, okay? Always, you know, laughing with the ladies. You have to choose. Is it Ada Wilcox? Is it Millicent slash Laurie? Or is it Millie slash Angela? But before you decide, you have to know the dark side of these women. They look really pretty right now and sane, right? But they can be a bit insane, just so you know. Is it emotional, blackmail-y, uh, whorish uh, she? Is it emotionally, blackmail biblical Laurie? Or is it emotionally and physically blackmail Angela? All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is a little disturbing because choosing from your castmates is a little bit incestuous. So we'll change the lineup. Okay. Is it? Is it? Diane, the makeup artist. Oh my God. Oh, we went there. Oh my goodness. Is it? Kanchi, the production manager. We go oh, in there. We went there. Or is it? Maxi, the stage manager! And we ain't going oh, ever yes. back. We ain't ever going back. <laughs> okay, Andres, Andres, you have to choose carefully. Casal, kiss, and kill. Oh my gosh. Wait, wait. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Um, okay, um, shoot. Let's go with Diane. Diane, Diane. 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 Oh, uh, Andres, start with kill. Pressure, yeah. pressure. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Diane, hi. <laughs> if you're watching, thank you, first of all, thank you for watching and thank you for being a great makeup artist. But I don't know why, like when I saw the word kill, you were the first person that popped up. I'm sorry, but you have to go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Even uh, in killing someone, he's so respectful. Kiss, kiss. God bless you, Kanchi. I will, I will kiss you. <laughs> Beyond. And uh, Mary, of course. Maxine, we've worked together. And I think we'd make a great team. So, yes. Maxine, why is your name on the list of donors? You're like the highest bidder what? all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, what is happening? <laughs> Good, Good job, Andres. Good job. Andres. I've hey, never seen anyone there. navigate the. Thank you, Andres. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah. So polite when so, he's killing. At least so he's eloquently. Hey, donation time. Oh, uh, donation time. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in again. And it's this time of the show where we ask for you to, to share. And as you can see on the screens, there are links to donate uh, to the Open House Project. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot or. There are links below that you can just type in. Uh, there's plenty of time to donate. And you know, this, these are very challenging times for all of us. And we just ask whatever you can donate um, would, be, would be greatly appreciated and will go a long way. So, so thank you. Thank you. And here are the links and the checking account numbers from Land Bank. And yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here. So thank you. And because you guys have been so wonderful, we're going to give you a little treat. This is uh, the play within the play where we'll be showing well, elements of the design, the direction, um, and the acting. Of course, the design, you have the costume, the lights, the sound, the set, and they all come together. And we hope you enjoy this little bit. OK, so that's Andres entering after a 10-second quick change. I love that. There were parts uh, of the play, the display where he would forget a certain prop. He would have to give me a telegram, but he forgot. Telegram. <laughs> because of the quick change he didn't forget it's just you know. and then this Look. is one of the biggest the biggest stunts in the show it, are it's Tarek on crutches my butt looks so good in these pants right i'm just noticing it now <laughs> if you yeah. want to donate the wrong socks. On it's crazy what do you mean why yeah. am i wearing the wrong socks socks are for That's covering the period. feet those socks are not with <laughs> Sorry, Missy, you coming into the scene also, you had a very quick change also. 
super quick yeah. change the wig mm. and the lipstick and the earrings yeah. and the necklace oh my gosh and then and you but people I, love this dress people love this dress run. people I would buy this. this dress okay now this is one of those uh one of those uh, absurd bits of choreo maybe pj you might want to talk about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had to we had to do a parang 1930s style dancing Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. But the catch is the actor gets injured out during prod week. So we have to we have to choreograph a funny dance about them loving each other. And they actually have like a backstage fling. They're old lovers, but Ada is married. And there's all this subtext while they're also playing the role. And then they're on crutches and then they fly to each other. So it's about flying to each other all the time. I don't know, like they're beasts, like horny beasts or something. I don't know. And then this is the Mahiwagang push of the divan. How baller was the The fly. hardest thing to choreograph, <laughs> aside from Tarek. <laughs> it's hard and work, Bobby. It's, it's hard so, work. I don't know what's easier to choreograph, the divan or Tarek. So I don't know. <laughs> and then also, Om, um, maybe you might want to talk, Om, um, about, the, about the set. How did that platform get there and who was underneath? <laughs> Nako, siguro isang oras kami nakahiga dun sa likod <laughs> nung platform na yon. But um, that was what I was saying uh, earlier. I, I really like the the intensity and the commitment of the rep staff. Uh, they were there under the platforms. Yeah, and uh, looking at the at the video now, it really looked very mechanical. You know, uh, hindi mo akalain may mga tao nandun sa ilalim ng kitak. And I'm very grateful. Thank you. Next level, and that next set almost slanted, no? Om? That was a slanted set. Yeah, it was yeah. raked. Yeah. Yes, it was the decision to make it a raked stage again. Um, we wanted the action really to, we really wanted to put the action closer to the audience. And hindi lang nag work yung flat eh. And then when we did the rake set, it, it was more engaging, I think. And yeah, it worked. It worked. It really worked. Guys, uh, is it, is it shout-out time? Yeah, someone is asking, hi, Jean Square, who helped me with memorizing my lines. My gosh. Hola, hola, Jean. She's asking, what is our favorite onstage blunder? Me, 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 can I answer? It's Who's Robbie. It? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's not here. Time. So you guys saw <laughs> this lag lag na siya. Wait, I have to, because it's just so funny. I couldn't stop laughing backstage. But there's this scene with Tarek and his crutches. And you saw you guys saw that Robbie sits down on the divan after Robbie uh, after Tarek pushes the divan. So he has a line which is like, Don't speak of death now that we're out of its crutches, clutches. He totally forgot it. So he instead he just tells Missy, Shh, stop talking. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it stop talking or did he say don't speak? <laughs> like, I can't remember. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we miss you, Robbie. It's, it's Andres it's coming in without the telegram. Yes. <laughs> Twice that happened. <laughs> I couldn't find it. I was like checking my, my coat. It's not in here. Check my pockets. It wasn't there. I'm like, what am I going to do now? So I just whispered in the message from the telegram. <laughs> I'm standing there on stage, man, for like God knows how long it feels like, and I'm just like, "Where is my telegram, boy? Where is what's happening?" And blah blah, blah. and then he comes in and is like, "Oh, there's okay. Telegram." There's this very physical blocking, right, uh, in, in Act Two, where uh, the two women, I think, uh, Mika enters uh, enters the apartment, follow, and then later on, it's Justin, and it, they're kind of like in the middle of this quarrel, and somebody kind of like left that that uh, black garbage bag on the floor. And so they were moving around with dragging this black garbage <laughs> bag with their feet. And they were about to go into a dance and I was in the audience kind of like clutching my heart, wondering how they're going to go through the choreo with that black plastic bag fly floating around. Derek, <laughs> Derek, I gotta ask you, I know you always there watching the shows and all of these things, but I know there was one moment that really stood out for you in terms of non-actor, audience participation when a certain feline yeah. made its well, way on stage. Yeah, right. So there was major, the climax of the play, you've got this major dramatic scene between Missy and 
and Tarek uh, having it all out as you know ex lovers, and finally they got back together, and then now they're breaking up again. So it's basically big, you know, the, the climax of the play, the climax break up again of the relationship, and there's this cat that just jumps up onto the stage and go, it's about to go to them, but I think was terrorized by all the screaming on the stage and just you know darts out to the wings. So that was uh, that was memorable. My favorite, I my favorite. Cat. I know that I, cat was crazy. I was in the but middle then, of you know that intense scene, and then I had to just I saw and I focus, <laughs> focus. My favorite, my favorite parts in every show because as as the director of the play within the play, um, I was blocked to go out into the audience in the sides watching the rehearsals, and <laughs> and I would never know um, if there were latecomers. Then if I would go out into the audience, where I would place myself. And that was really an ongoing exercise in awareness because I had to be present in the scene. But at the same time, am I blocking somebody's view because I'm not a small guy? Um, where do I sit in the audience? The front row is taken. I sat on the aisle. Um, there was one particular show where somebody actually, I was, I, was, I was watching the scene playing out on stage. Somebody tapped me on my shoulder, the person beside me, an audience member and showed me the page on the program where I was. But I'm verifying, <laughs> is this you? And I'm like, Shit. oh my God. I'm in rehearsals. So I never knew what to expect. <laughs> every show, being out in the audience. Every night. But I remember, Jamie, there was one show that you had to go backstage and go under and pass through a door to get to your yes. queue. And there was one time that the doors were locked. So you yes. just, parang, I don't know what happened. Uh, I had know. to run as fast as I can. And everybody was like, wow, hingal na hingal yung director. <laughs> because ang layo ng tinakbuhan ko because the doors were locked. And then they were speaking there. Speaking of, of locked... Oh, go. Go, go. Yeah, no, no, no. but speaking of locked doors, there was a scene because the door is locked from the inside. I couldn't enter the, the house. Eric... <laughs> I had to open the door for Laurie when I'm supposed to be a surprise entrance. <laughs> Good. Okay, the magic guys, of so many, theater. So many of our friends are watching us. So Ooh, shout, shout out to, to our friends, Nelson Carucho, Patricia hey. Salem, Stephen Vinyash. I love shout you, Stephen. Shout out to the Double Poggy crew, Edsel Aldous, Reg, Boom Boom. Carla Gutierrez, Sonia Hermesisi Mabatukan. What's up, Everett? What's up, Everett? Eric Mabatukan. Lisa is watching us. Lisa got us all together. It was because of her that this amazing, wonderful team who was just wonderful to work with is together. And Hello. I will forever be grateful for, to her for this. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. It's my mother. Say hello to my mother. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, yeah, happy happy Mother's Mother's Day, Day to, Mother. to all the mothers yeah. out there! Yeah, she wants to turn off the lights because there's too many lights on here, Direct. I'm sorry. She pays Becca. the bills. Becca Coates is watching. Sunshine hey, Tan, Regina Valerio. Renee Nuevo saying, I am obsessed with that green dress, Missy. I love it. Oh, bonsai. Maybe I we want can that. sell it, depending Ooh. on the donation. Well, let's see. Andres hasn't removed his shirt yet, so... <laughs> All, right. All right, Andres, Wait. it's time. I need some music. I need some we music. We don't know how much... <laughs> Liesl, do we know how much people have donated already to this show so that uh, Andres can take off his shirt? Or maybe he should just take off his shirt. No, yeah, oh, come on, guys. If you want to, if you want him to, to take off his shirt, we have, like... Seven more minutes to raise <laughs> ten thousand pesos. Yeah, let's okay, see. how about you, okay, since dress teaser now? What's that? No, how about if um someone will donate more than ten thousand? Let's shave Tarek's beard. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Ten thousand. Maybe we can shave Tarek's beard. Yes. <laughs> Just shave all of me then, if that's the case, what you want to do. Andressi, I'm doing your job for you, I'm undressing. <laughs> hey, Andres, here's, here's your music. Hey, go, Andres. Andres, that's the music, go, go Andres, your director is telling you. Feeling it, yesterday. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody. <laughs> Go and dress. Go and dress. No. Oh. <laughs> I was had... in the live right Baka naman Andres is quarantoned. Mm. Yeah, Andres. No. Willing, And... willing. And what's the use mm. of spending what's all the hours Sabatin? in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question for the cast. All right, you guys. Okay. For the results of the, of the donation. What did you discover about your director that you didn't know about him during the production? <laughs> Okay, I'd like to be the first one to share. But then I discovered uh, playing the director in the show, of course, I had in my mind a lot of pegs that I could possibly use to, uh, to portray this character. And I realized that some, some of my pegs won't really uh, work. And it wasn't until Tech Week where uh, Tita, Tita Bibeth, uh, direct's wife, was coming to watch. She pulls me aside and she gives me a few mannerisms for me to copy during the show. One of them, apparently, which I never really noticed, but then apparently he likes biting his fingernails. So that was really strange, but then I, I, I was so thankful I could use that in my role. I have one. I, I didn't know that Derek was a really, really good piano player. Yeah. Like Yeah, like during our breaks, you just hear the piano playing, and I'm just like, okay, is that is that background music? Is that from the theater? And then you walk exactly. on stage, and you see him just playing, and just so beautiful. So. Baller, baller level. You. <laughs> uh, I didn't know he was so like well versed in listening to pitches, tones, and all of these things. Had I known that, I would I would have been better in knowing what those things are. That's all. You know this. Production has taught us not just about direct but about so many wonderful things about the theater and you know about the artistic team, about each other, about the audiences, and and really we're so super grateful. The band direct. Yeah, yeah, uh, and we really just wanted to you know I just wanted to share something like um, before this lockdown, you know, I I, I really had about uh, 16 shows in my calendar over the next uh, over within four weeks. I saw four of them before the lockdown. And then after the lockdown, of course, I just felt really deprived. I couldn't see the whole season, which is really within four weeks, at least that, that early quarter, diba. Right? And so uh, I just wanted to, to just remind everybody in the audience, yeah, theater lives on. I mean, we're in a difficult period right now, but theater lives on. Let's look forward to the reopening of and recontacting with each other again through Theater Works. And uh, I really, I, I really, really have a greatest respect for the theater community, this theater, com this, this theater community in, in the Philippines on, on all the shows and the hard work. And really look forward to seeing your works after all of this is, you know, after all of this is over. Yeah, and that's why we're also very grateful that as a as a company, as a as a show, we were able to open and close before this pandemic hit. And uh, really, uh, when, when you're closing a show, you realize, oh, I'm going to miss this show. But uh, little did we know that we're going to miss all the shows that we're never able to even open. So we're so, so thankful that we were able to complete this process. Uh, you know, yes, and really, we're also grateful that you guys are with us here because really, the stage kiss and stage kissing for a long time will be a thing of the past because of this whole pandemic. So we are just very grateful also that you guys shared this historical event with us and, and that <laughs> you donated. Yes, thank you. Thank you all so much to everyone who watched, who joined us tonight for this little get together of us crazy folks here. And thank you, thank you to everyone who donated. It means so much to us that you would go out and, and just give one you can give but from the bottom of our hearts really thank you thank you all so very much thank you thank you thank you, you. Uh, wonderful you, donated, ladies and you keep theater alive it's all up what to you what you have donated will go to the people who have lost work uh, because of the covid pandemic the theater people costume design uh, costume designers costume mistresses uh, musicians tech the, the tech people Um, even some actors, especially those who need it. So Open House has a process for that and we are so tremendously grateful. And because we're so grateful, we're actually going to sing for you. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Direct Once we have found her, never let her go. Once, Once you we have, have found, found her, her, never. Everybody, thank you, thank you. Hubad, Andres, Hubad, Andres, Andres, Hubad, you have less than one second. Do it, do it, do it now, please. Oh, you risk it. I did not. Say something, Andres, say something. 